Hi, I'm Randy Starling, heart failure cardiologist at the Cleveland Clinic, and we we're just back from ACC, and there was a lot of excitement at ACC, and I'd like to tell you a little bit today about the Innovate heart failure trial. As you may know, we have a challenge in heart failure that many patients become symptomatic with reduced ejection fractions, and although we have terrific medications, they still have significant functional impairment. And as an example, cardiac resynchronization therapy by ventricular pacers were developed over a decade ago, and they've made a huge impact both on survival but improving quality of life. However, there's still a significant group of patients that is on best medical therapy, is not eligible for cardiac resynchronization therapy, which would typically be a narrow QRS, that we are still searching for additional therapies to help this patient population. Within that domain, there's been tremendous interest in autonomic modulation. And autonomic modulation can involve carotid baroreceptor stimulation, vagal nerve stimulation, renal uh, nerve sympathetic denervation, which you've heard a lot about from previous speakers in hypertension trials, and also spinal cord stimulation. Today, I'd like to tell you about the effect of vagus nerve stimulation in heart failure. And this is the results of the Innovate Heart Failure trial, which tested the hypothesis of whether modulating vagal tone would have an impact on heart failure. So Innovate HF represents the largest trial to date that was randomized and event-driven in over 700 patients. It was sponsored by BioControl, who has a pri uh, proprietary uh, catheter called the CardioFit system. And the trick with stimulating the vagus nerve has to do with what's called the duty cycle, which means how often the nerve is stimulated, the voltage that is delivered, and it's virtually impossible to blind a patient because when you stimulate the vagal nerve, it can cause uh, coughing and changes in the voice. And the whole theory behind this is that increased parasympathetic tone and decreased sympathetic tone will improve heart failure outcomes. So the Innovate Heart Failure Protocol pretty much went after the niche that I've already mentioned, stable class three patients on stable optimal medical therapy, already taking an ACE inhibitor or equivalent ARB, a beta blocker, and actually some patients that went into the trial that had CRT but were deemed as non-responders. So the demographics are shown on this slide, and it's a typical group of patients that we see in a trial such as this with uh, age of 60, uh, mainly male. Uh, virtually all of these patients were class three with a six minute walk that was quite depressed at about 300 meters, an ejection fraction of 25%. And you can see all the patients were on standard medical therapy. So unfortunately, we were disappointed as were the uh, <clears throat> attendees at the ACC that the primary endpoint was not met which was the time to the first occurrence of an unplanned heart failure hospitalization or all-cause death. So you may ask yourself, does this mean that vagal nerve stimulation and this type of therapy has no role in the future? The answer is probably no. There is ongoing analysis to look at specific subgroups that might benefit and just how is the best way to deliver this therapy. I would suggest that if you think about this like a biventricular pacer, we know it's a good therapy, but if it gets to the wrong patient or if the lead can't be placed in the right location, it's not going to work. In vagal nerve stimulation, we have a lot more to learn about it, and hopefully 
we will find in the future that it has a role. So in summary, vagal nerve stimulation was shown to have an acceptable safety profile and is well tolerated. It did not reduce the incidence of heart failure events or all-cause mortality in this group of patients with systolic heart failure. We did see, however, positive trends in improvement in NYHA class, exercise capacity as measured by six-minute walk, and quality of life measurements. There were also no significant differences in echocardiographic measures between groups. So to close, I think stay tuned. I think you'll see more in the future about vagal nerve stimulation and other forms of autonomic stimulation as we try to fill an unmet need for this patient population. Thank you.